Yes. Hello, good, uh, good afternoon. Um, I hope I didn't scare you away. Um, my name is uh, Johan, uh, together with my wife Karen. Uh, we founded a brewery uh, seven years ago, a local brewery here in Antwerp. Uh, they asked me to talk about um, uh, what makes small breweries work or don't work. Um, so I'll share that vision with you. Now, before starting our own brewery, I had the pleasure also of working in bigger breweries, which also gives me the perspective of the other side of the table, looking from a big brewery to smaller breweries, and I'll share that with you as well in the coming uh, 20 minutes. Just a quick introduction on our brewery. So we're, uh, we're here, located here in Antwerp, city centre, in an old building from the harbour. Uh, we're a completely independent brewery. Uh, I'll come back to that later. That has some advantages and some disadvantages, mainly budget and resources are limited. Freedom is uh, maximized. Uh, we have a 40 hectolitre brew house, a uh, German built brew house for those who are into brewing, the Brabham brew house. Uh, we are in an old warehouse from the harbour, uh, which also gave us the opportunity to build a brew pub inside of our brewery. So people can come in, uh, see us brew, see how beer is made, uh, enjoy beers, um, and, and really like in an open kitchen, as many new brewery styles, uh, new breweries do. You can see how beer is made and meanwhile uh, taste them as well. Um, so that's basically uh, who we are. Uh, our story started with bringing back uh, safe beer, which is uh, the historical ale of Antwerp. Uh, meanwhile, we have different beers. If you go into our brew pub, uh, average about eight or nine beers we'll have on draft. Four of them are available on uh, bottles. So that's a bit so you know who we are. Um, now to come to the, the key point of this, uh, of this topic is uh, key success factors of small breweries. And let me immediately uh, kind of destroy that topic. Uh, success factors, that's a very um, promising title, success factors. Uh, what is the success? Uh, for me or for us as a brewery, I think if you're a small independent brewery and you're able to pay uh, the loans you took from a bank, uh, you're able to uh, pay your salaries of all the people uh, and make some great beers at the same time and you survive, that's already a big success. And that's a positive story I'm trying to convey. But I'm saying this because some people uh, think by entering the craft beer market or the beer market in general, that it's uh, some sort of money machine. You walk in, everybody loves beer, craft beer is a hype, so let's make something cool and funky, put a nice label on it and let's count the money and walk away. Uh, those who enter the market like that, and many of them have, uh, are in for quite a, a surprise. Because the, the beer market is a lovely and really great market, but it's not that easy either. So you have to do things carefully. Now what are the challenges in the, in the beer market, especially for a small uh, independent brewery as we are? Um, whatever we do, it's always more expensive than a big brewery. Working in a big brewery, you had concepts like economies of scale. The bigger you are, the cheaper you can do things. Even without compromising quality, you can compromise quality, then it's even cheaper. But even without compromising quality, uh, you still have economies of scale. Well, we have the inverse, we have uh, disadvantages of scale. Everything we do, everything we buy, everything costs more. So our beer is more uh, expensive to brew and becomes more expensive in the market. We have no advertising budgets, uh, nothing available, uh, mainly some beer mats, some glasses, some posters and that's it. So you're competing with big breweries, like the biggest companies in the world have huge advertising budgets. Be aware you don't have those budgets. The brands, you can love your brands and I do, that's why I'm wearing a t-shirt, uh, not, not only when I'm here. Um, but they're not that famous worldwide, let's be honest. So you don't have those strong brands that the big competitors do. We have a good sales force of two people uh, in Belgium and two people in Holland, <laughs> that's it. Um, so not a big, huge uh, sales team that can visit every client every week uh, uh, all over the country. And last, I won't, don't want to depress everybody who wants to start a brewery, it will become a positive message as well. But the distribution, uh, it's mentioned this morning as well, uh, we have no control over distribution. Um, locally, 8 out of 10 bars in Belgium are owned by bigger breweries. The, the, the supply chain towards our route to market is controlled by bigger brewers who are not always that keen on letting us in into their bars. So there are quite a lot of challenges to face uh, if you go into that market. So for me there are uh, five or six points, well actually there are more, but five or six key points you have to take care of if you want to stand a chance. That's not even a guarantee to success, but if you want to stand a chance. The first one, and this will come as, uh, I hope, not as a surprise, but I think if you take away one message of me today, then it's really this one. Uh, top quality. I think that's your only long-term sustainable advantage you can have is make sure that you have a better quality than what is standard in the market. And that might sound ambitious, but it's not. It's really, really, really important. If you have the mainstream uh, uh, breweries, the big breweries, putting in the, the norm in the market 
and you're a niche player, you have to try to be better or you have to be better or you will not last for a long time. This is one of my quotes and um, artisanal is not the same as amateurish. I had to look that word up, uh, apparently that's English amateurish. Uh, but I hope you know what I mean. Um, and this sounds like a stupid one-liner, I know, but if, if, if you're honest, how many times didn't you get a glass of really artisanal beer and there are floaties in there, there's no foam, it smells like sewage. Oh, but it's artisanally brewed. No, no, it's badly brewed. And that's, bless you. That's, that's one thing that you really have to, if, if you only rely on, on the, the, the nice factor of being a small local brewery and you don't mind quality at all, it will not take you far. Your friends will buy it, maybe a local bar will do it for some time, but it will, will not carry you far, not in distance, not in, not in time. So artisanal, that's not the same. Quality is really key. You make more expensive beer. Uh, if you're more expensive, you don't do big advertising campaigns, you cannot afford to do promotions or price cuts, the only reason people will buy your beer, even if it's a bit more expensive, is if you have top quality. So start by making sure you try to get the best quality every everything you do, from ingredients to the way you do it. And if you're in a split uh, decision, which way should I go? Just pick the one that gives you the best quality. And in my opinion, that's the way to go forward and to make sure you will still be there in two or three years. That's um, a small quote there. Life lesson quality comes at the price. Find quality first, pay what you and pay what they deserve. I think that's actually what people do. If they like a beer and it's half a year or more expensive, that's nothing. Uh, in the end, beer is not that expensive. But if you're more expensive and it smells or tastes like sewage, it's a difficult sell. <laughs> in the same category, uh, all in the line of quality, and I, I don't think he's in the room, but in, in Holland, uh, a few months ago, uh, there was um, uh, a research done on small breweries where they asked how their quality control was managed. And for me, it was an eye-opener to see um, that two out of three uh, small breweries didn't even have uh, professional equipment to check their, their beers or outsource it to somebody who does it for them. That 40% of the smaller breweries uh, claimed they never had any quality issues and never had to destroy any batch of beer. That's not possible. Anybody who has a brewery knows that sometimes shit happens and you have to destroy something. And, and for me, that's, that's, not, that's not such a big problem. If you do it, the cost of putting bad beer in the market and, get, and hoping to get those consumers back is a lot more expensive than destroying one batch of beer, especially if it's not in the bottle. And what's on, on the bottom slide, those who visit a lot of uh, beer festivals will recognize this, I hope. Uh, if you have infected beer, don't sell it as a funky, wild, sour, Belgian-style ale or something. No, it's just an infected batch. Destroy it, be honest, and move on. There's no harm in that. Make some good beer. For me, the biggest threat to small breweries is not the big brewers, but often journalists ask, aren't you afraid of the big brewers? Yes, they may sometimes make our life difficult, but the biggest threat to small breweries, or to any brewery, but especially to small craft brewers, is bad beer entering the market. If people, general public, reads about uh, specialty beer, craft beer, they get intrigued. Maybe they're a wine drinker, some lager, and then say, oh, I want to try a craft beer. They pay five euros for supposedly a good craft beer. They taste it, it's sour, bad smell, mm, don't like it. Try a second one, same thing. Third one, oh, there are floaties in there. They will never, ever, ever enter the category again. They're lost forever. So that's really a big threat for your own brewery and for the category. So that was my point on quality. I think that's, a, that's an important point. The second thing, so make sure, so that's, that's if, you, if, you, if you're not into quality, just walk out and do something else. The second uh, thing that I think is very um, uh, important is be unique. Um, there's no harm in doing a style exercise in making your own IPA or blonde or whatever, but if you want to stand a chance on the long term in a bar, you have to be unique. And unique doesn't mean that your beer has to be outrageously bitter or, or peppery or whatever. You can do that if that's your style. For me, being unique is recognizable. If you give me your beer and the day after I taste oh, it was a good beer or a bad beer, hopefully, hopefully a good beer, the day after you put it in ten similar, between 10 similar beers, you have to be able to pick it and say, this is the beer, your beer I had uh, yesterday. Then you make something unique. Why is this so important? As long as you copy what other competitors are doing and following this supposedly what's now being the trend, you will end up being very replaceable. Everybody has an IPA, everybody has this, this, but what makes you unique? If you're in a bar and your beer, there are drinkers who like your beer and there's nobody else who makes this type of beer, that's not easy, I know, but if you manage to do that, then you're irreplaceable and the bar will keep you in. And they will switch all the triples and all the blonde beers and all the replaceable beers. It's a big challenge, that's not easy, it's easier said than done. But I think that's always for us um, uh, something we, we challenge our beers on, say, okay, is this unique enough? Is this 
uh, different than mainstream or than competitors. There we go. Um, in the same line uh, on authenticity, last year there was a lot of talk about on the forum in Brussels uh, on authenticity. To quickly pick back on that line, authenticity doesn't mean you have to bring in some monks or some wooden paneling or, or I don't know, whatever uh, you think is authenticity. Authenticity is really sticking to who you are. I think we just had an example of a clear vision of what the Leopold 7 stands for as a brewery. Tell your own story. I'm always surprised if I, if I for example, walk into a Dutch brewery or an Italian brewery, I would like to see what makes an Italian brewery different from a Belgian brewery. I don't want to see there a copy of something they saw in Belgium, also in the US, a guy with the same beard and the same hat and the same shirt telling the same thing. No, be authentic, have your own story. The good thing about most breweries is you all have your own founding history. It could be as a home brewery, it could be a recipe, it could be an ingredient. Tell this story, tell your own story, and that's what really makes you stand out from the crowd and not just being a generic um, one in the line brewery. I talked about the weaknesses of small breweries uh, and clearly they are there, it's not easy. But if you think about it, there's a lot of advantages of being a small brewer as well. I work, I don't know if, if anybody's here from a big brewer. Too shy to come out, yeah, okay. <laughs> Hi. Uh, oh yes, a big one, very big one. <laughs> um, I've been in a big brewery as well. So let's imagine we invent a new beer. It takes a lot of time before the new beer is in the market, just by the size of the company. Being a small brewery, you have the advantage of a small team, for us it's five people in the brewery, so if you have an idea between having the idea and brewing it, if you want we can do it the next day, you can have it four or five weeks later in the market, so you can move really, really quick, you can move on, on opportunities. It's a small team, so it's very personal, everybody's very involved, but also towards clients, it's, uh, it's really an opportunity, and it really gives you so much drive and so much, so yes, you're limited, but you're also very, very, very fast and agile, which is an edge which uh, is difficult to achieve uh, by big brewers. The fifth uh, and four last point of what I think is needed to start your own brewery, try to know everything. If you're the founder of a brewery, and you might be a home brewer, you might come from a commercial side, you might come just being a beer amateur and thinking, oh, I would dream of having my own uh, brewery. It's very tempting to stick to your own field of expertise and say, okay, this is my thing, I'm a brewer. And then often you hear, oh, but I'm a brewer, so I'm really completely not interested in everything commercial. Logistics, what a bore. Finances, who cares? I have an accountant for that. If you ignore everything, you run into big risks. A company is all intertwined, it's all linked, and if you don't manage everything, logistics is a good point. It's very boring logistics, sorry for the guys who work in logistics, but it's a boring topic. If you don't control it, it, would eat, it will eat out your company from the inside out. It consumes all the, all the money. Before you know it, you go bankrupt without realizing it. So try to know about everything, uh, from, from brewing to logistics to finance to marketing to everything there is to know. But also realize, it's not because you're a startup entrepreneur or whatever, that you don't think you know everything. So try to know everything, but don't think you know everything. Find people who can help you, expertise, ask people's advice. You can still do whatever you want, but ask people's advice. Surround yourself with people who are a lot better than you. I'm very proud to say that everybody else in the company, in their field, is a lot better than I am in what they do. And I just bring the coffee around or something, but still, that's a good thing. I, I attract people, and the things I don't know, we sometimes have external expertise. For example, on quality control, we work with uh, the people who are also here from uh, Beer Center Dalvo. They help us on quality control and do the checks. They have the expertise we need on that field. So that's important, I think, to uh, not be shy to uh, attract extra advice. And last, um, have fun in a brewery. It's a very passionate thing to do. Share that with a lot of people. Uh, the good thing is we're not selling um, plastic uh, tubes or, or uh, I don't know what, bricks or something. It's such a fun thing and it's really attractive to, uh, to tell about. I think those things as a small brewery you have to take into account. Now the second part of this thing is okay, if you do all this, there's also a lot of operational things you have to take care of. 
I think tomorrow, uh, I think he's in the room, uh, you definitely have to uh, uh, listen to uh, Pete. He will talk a bit on how you make sure your, your uh, brewery comes on the radar of, um, in terms of communication. Now, how does this impact the market? Um, you have all these small breweries who start. How does this impact the market? I think it's one of the best things that's ever happened. And obviously, maybe I'm biased at being a small brewer, but still. You have with all the small breweries, there was a big risk 10 or 15 years ago when I started in the brewing industry 20 years ago, I'm getting old. Um, there was a big risk of beer becoming a commodity, price driven, everybody made the same, everybody's focusing on price reduction and efficiency optimization. So it could have become a commodity, cheap price thing. With all the new beers entering the market, all the small players are really um, getting people interested in beer, educating people on beer, getting them to try new things. And people who would never enter the beer market now get involved and learn about beer. So that's really dynamizing the market. And from a uh, commodity market, price driven, it's moved towards premium market. People are not afraid to pay a lot of money for really good beers. So that's actually a very good thing. And from that perspective, everybody should be a huge fan of what is happening. Now at the same time, and let's be honest about this, most people in the market are doing the opposite, are fighting from a small perspective the big companies and the big companies are trying to kill up the small companies. A lot of resources, a lot of money, a lot of time is being invested counter or countering this, this trend. And let's be honest, it's from both sides. So I will, uh, oops, there we go. Um, from small to big, and I'm a big fan of that to be, to be clear, from small perspective, it's very common for a small brewery to just take out the bazooka whenever a big brewery moves, launches something and say, oh, this is rubbish, it's industrial, it's fake, it's this and that. And I know why we do this. They don't make life easy, they block the road to market, they try everything, to. Get, sometimes they try to get us out of the market or, or steal a client with huge promotions. So there is some frustration and that's a reaction. But Communicating on your own strengths, like here being independent. I'm very proud that we have a completely independent brewery. That's a positive signal. Talk about your strengths, why, why your beer is good. But I'm not a big fan of putting negative communication. Tell this to your wife. I do this all the time. If I'm frustrated by a big brewery, she will know. But don't put this in the market. Don't put this in the journals. I think for the average Joe reading this in a newspaper, he will just read, oh, beautiful story about wine, beautiful story about whiskeys. Oh, a new beer. Apparently they say this is all artificial and fake. Oh, and oh, small breweries, they don't have control. So all these negative stories, that doesn't help anybody. So from small breweries, stick to your strengths and communicate on that. Now, the other side, the big breweries, um, and I can say this because I work there as well, what should you do? And I will not put names on it, but I've been in meetings where they were talking about blood on the, the bumper of the car meaning that uh, the, the sales team should put out of the market as many small breweries as possible, as quick as possible. With the philosophy, kill them off, they're kind of like the lice in the fur, or the flea in the fur, lice is for you, uh, flea in the fur. Is that a philosophy? Is that something you should do? And I'm not saying that every big brewery does it, but sometimes there's some um, friction, let's say. Is that something you should do? Put your resources, your people behind, killing off the smaller breweries before they become in danger. Personally, I don't think so. I think there's a lot of smarter strategies to see what is happening. Because it's a reality in the market. Small breweries are here, and they will probably stay here for uh, quite a while. If you look at it a different way, maybe there are some a lot smarter strategies to handle this. What if you could outsource your R&D? I've been in a big brewery. Guy number A has an idea for a new beer. Then he puts this to his boss, who talks about three or four months later with his boss. If he's lucky, it gets into the plans and they get budget by the end of the summer. And then they could put, uh, put a team together and they launch a project development team by November, December. They do first trials by February, March, April. They have a test brew. They put into market research, yada, yada, yada. And then you have two scenarios. Either the big chief says, this is taking too long. Put it in the market now and it's not finished. You have a bad beer in the market. Or no, no, we take a lot more time. And by the time it's finished, the opportunity has gone away. That's the reality of big brewers. I don't have to confirm it, but I've been there, I've seen this. There's a smarter way. If you really think about it, if all these small breweries who are in the business of trying to create new beers, new ingredients, new ways of brewing, they're at the forefront of innovation because they have no risk, they're very agile, they can move very quickly. From the big brewer's perspective, in my opinion, if you're smart, you just see what happens. They're in your bar, so you have real market data, real consumer feedback of what works, what doesn't work. You have a broad spectrum, not your own project, but all the projects who are in your bars. You can combine the best ideas, and you're doing market research, outsource, risk-free, money-free. So I think that would be a big plus to allow smaller breweries also in their breweries and learn from it. 
you have the leverage if you have good ideas to combine them and maybe roll them out on a bigger scale. Small breweries often don't even have the ambition to say, oh, I have this new beer, let's put this in all of the US and, 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 and Europe and, and Asia at the same time. You have the leverage so you can do it. So think about it, small breweries do for you free uh, and risk-free uh, research. A second big thing which is happening, uh, especially for the bigger breweries, they often have a whole street, all the bars are theirs. Now, if you know a bit about Entrade, their biggest challenge is to differentiate and make sure that they, uh, they can uh, be different from their competitor next door. So they have a new menu, another interior, etc. By having new beers, they can build their successful business, they will attract a new public, and in the end, if a bar runs well, if you're honest, 80 to 90% will still be the major brewer's beer. So your bar doesn't go bankrupt, it flourishes, and you sell a lot more beer. So to conclude, I'm gonna, uh, to conclude, if you put all those things in perspective, I think both from a smaller perspective and from a big perspective, it's really a good thing what is happening. And uh, for a big, big brewery, what small breweries are doing are dynamizing the market, attracting new people to the, into the category, helping bars to differentiate, getting new ideas tested in the market, which you can roll out. Look at all the hop-driven big brewers uh, beers which are being launched now. That's coming from smaller breweries, as an example. It will create growth and interest in the category, and in the end, the bigger players will take the biggest share of the growth or, of, or the upsell of higher prices in the market. So in the end, it's also the win for the bigger breweries. Which brings me to my conclusion. I think uh, there's a lot of challenges in the market, a lot of opportunities. And although the reality often uh, forces us to really look at each other in the eye as a competitor, I think if we co cooperate on it uh, and don't see each other as competitors, but as fighting the same battle to create a bigger and interesting uh, beer market, I think it's on the view of smaller and bigger breweries. Thank you. I think